So the title of today's video is, yes, you should join a community, but you shouldn't depend on it. And I want to start this by saying the single most important thing for growing as a streamer, especially early on, is networking. Networking will get you further than anything else you can do when you're first when you're starting out, but also later on down the road when you're trying to grow, maybe get over a plateau. You need to make friends in the industry. You need to make connections with other streamers and with your viewers and, and people that just watch streams. That's the only way to grow. If you don't make those connections, you will not grow. So I want to make sure I, I add to this. Don't join too many. I've noticed that there's a trend on Twitter of people that have like a mile long list of hashtags and ats to different accounts and those aren't going to help you. If you can't actually connect with people, if you can't make friendships and learn to, you know, work together in various ways, you're, you're not going to grow. You're going to struggle and you're going to basically be begging for viewers, which doesn't look good. <laughs> Nobody likes that. So make sure that you figure out what, what you can handle in terms of, of connection building and networking. I belong to two, Monstrosities and Team Synergy. And I sometimes still struggle to keep up with just those. And they're both fairly small, tight-knit communities. So if you join 10, you're not going to actually talk to anybody in them. You're not going to make a lot of friends. You're not going to make the connections. So people won't want to support you. And you won't be able to support them in the way that they need either. So really, it doesn't it, it's not support for support at that point. At that point, it's basically follow for follow, which is useless, but that's another video. So I believe that if you become too dependent on communities, like especially specific communities for your growth, you're going to run into some major problems. And I think these, these are the most important points for me. There might still be others, but these are the ones that I've seen the most. There's going to be a limit to your growth. Well, how do you, what do you mean limit to your growth? I'm meeting all these people. Well, depending on the size of community you, you join, there's an upper limit to the number of people that are in that community. And let's be real, nobody is going to be friends with and support every single person in a community. It's not going to happen. There's a bunch of reasons why, but basically, the, you, you look at the number of community members and then go down a few notches, and that's like the max level of individual support that you can expect. So if you only go to one or two and then you get dependent on them for that support, you'll grow and then you'll plateau. At worst, though, once you've reached a certain level, the support they give you goes down because they want to help smaller streamers first. So if you've hit a level, the, the support might actually go down. So you might actually find yourself going backwards. Just, <laughs> nobody wants that. Plateau is bad enough, but backwards? Uh -uh. <laughs> you also may not jive with everyone in a community. Like, it doesn't matter how friendly you are and, and whatnot. You'll never be able to be friends with everybody. Some people just, they won't, they won't like you. You won't like them. It happens. It's life. And your content just may not, you know, it may not be something that they're really into, right? So the, they may not be able to come and support you in the way that you want because it's just, you're not their thing. And that's fine. You need to accept that. No one is going to love everybody and not everyone is going to love you. So you need to accept that early or you're going to run into some trouble. And as well, when you go into a community, especially one that already existed for a while, there's going to be pre-made friend groups. There's going to be the circles within the community of people who support each other predominantly and then, you know, a little bit for other members as well. This is normal. It happens. What you need to do is you need to remember that getting into that is going to be difficult. So if a bunch of people have a bunch of good friends and each of those friends has friends and then you come in having to... Nobody likes divvying up their time, so there won't be as much support for you from those people as you might want. And, and, and I mean, that's life. That's normal. You, can, you, you can't expect anything less. So if you become dependent on that community for your growth, it's, it's gonna, you're going to get stuck because those people splitting those groups is difficult. It's human nature. And so you're going to run into trouble from that. So all of those combined means like, there's only so much support in a community, no matter how strong it is, no matter how much they push support for support. And as well, if you're joining, joining streaming communities, well, most members are going to be streamers too. There's only so much other streamers can offer support to other streamers. Most of us are trying to do it so that eventually we make some extra money. 
you know, a lot of us don't have a lot of money. So what we can give to other streamers, it ends up getting divvied up and divvied up and divvied up. And it's still awesome. But, you know, 20 people giving you five bits doesn't add up to a whole lot. So that's why I really think that it's important that you join them and that you, you do make these friends and these connections that you need, but that you remember you need to learn how to be a better streamer, always learning new things, always learning how to push your stream to the next level so that you can attract non-community members and non-streamers to your chat. The people that don't also stream are the ones that are going to ultimately be your biggest supporters because they're going to pick the streamers that they like, not every streamer in a group. They're just going to pick the ones they like. So that means that you have much more potential for strong growth oriented support from non-streamers. So you, you may need to move outside of those communities to find that as well. You don't have to join only streaming communities. You can join communities for other things where you may meet non-streamers, but people that will also enjoy what you're doing. If you play horror games, you, there are communities for that. If you like doing retro speed runs, there's communities for that. Look around. There, there are a multitude of communities that you can get involved in that aren't streaming related, but will still net you growth in the long term. If you let yourself become too dependent on one or two communities for your growth, you will be stifled and you will plateau. And as I said before, at worst, you'll start going backwards, which is the opposite of what you want. You need to learn to produce viable streaming content that people will want to come and watch repeatedly over a long period of time to really get that strong growth oriented support base that you need to be successful. And the other thing too is you don't have to stick with just other people's communities. You can build your own community that is supportive around your streaming, but also, you know, possibly offering support to other streamers or to people for other things. In my community, the Spoon Drawer, I'm trying to make a community for my fans and, you know, other gamers and other streamers. But in particular, I want to attract other disabled, chronically ill, mentally ill, neuro neurodivergent streamers, gamers, who may find that they're having a difficult time finding a community that, that really understands and supports the things that they go through that are unique to their to those types of experiences. And so that has become a big part of my community building, is to find those people, offer them support, and give them a place to come where they can talk about normal stuff. I have a gaming channel and you know all of media channel all of that but i also have channels specifically for people that are ill or disabled or whatnot so that they can talk about those things with other people who understand being common ground is really important that's really the basis for making these connections that you need if, if you can't relate to those people if they can't relate to you and you can't come together on something well, you're not really going to be, you're not going to be friends and, you know, you're going to find it difficult to support each other. So finding people that have that connection in some way with your, con with your content will, will help immensely with building that community around your content that you need to be able to grow. The point I want to touch on is how to maximize your potential within these communities that you're joining, because you want to make sure that you're using the available resources effectively to grow towards your goals, but also that you can offer these communities something in return as well, because the, the best and easiest way to grow is the support for support model. So you want to make sure that you're making the best use of what's there. So the first thing you need to think about is what kind of community is it? Is it a streaming based community? That matters because yes, you want to be in some streaming communities, but you may also want to explore non-streaming communities. As I said before, something that related, relates to your content in some way may also be a viable way to network and grow, even if they're not other streamers. If you're in a streaming community specifically, you also need to remember they're streamers as well. There are going to be other people in that community that stream at the same time as you. Is this going to be a problem for you? I can sometimes struggle with this because it feels like the more popular people that are streaming at the same time as me get more of the community's attention. But it's really important to step outside yourself and realize, firstly, it's not all about you. Secondly, the people that want to watch you will watch you. And three, it's not a competition. 
there's not a limit to your, your potential. You just need to embrace the work that is required to go to the next level. The next point is the most important. You need to engage with the community. You need to get in there. You need to introduce yourself. You need to talk to people. Make sure you're following the rules because that's important. Some communities have different rules about how to self-promote or whether you should, you know, all of those things. You want to make sure that you're doing that correctly because you don't want to leave a sour taste in anyone's, in anyone's mouth because you've neglected to follow the rules. Remember, it's their community, their rules. If you don't like it, you can find a different community that suits you better. Go in there. You want to talk. You want to make friends. You know, find ways that you can get into the conversations, you know, offer your own opinions and, and you know, the standard, standard making friend stuff. <laughs> make sure you check out their streams and their social media because you want to, you want to be exposed to as many streamers and as much social media as you can so that you can see what's out there and find things that might work for you that you're not already using. Because that's the, that's the last point. You need to ask for advice from the seasoned streamers, the ones that have been around a while. Maybe there's people that are partners already, or maybe they're on partner push, where you know they're really working hard to get their viewership up. And it's working, they're on their way. What are they doing? What is working with what they're doing? Can you emulate that? Don't copy, especially if something is really unique, don't copy it outright. But there are still ways that you can take little details and kind of work them into your overall persona, I, so, I suppose, your, your way of doing things on Twitch. And it's really important to do that because if it really works for somebody, it may work for you too. Now, it may not work, so if it doesn't, don't, don't get down, try, try again, try something new. But if they know things and you don't know them, you can learn them. So going to these people, asking questions, you know, if you're having technical problems, if you're not sure why something is or isn't working, go ask them, find out if they have the answer because they probably do or they can find you something or someone that will help. So I think to wrap all of this up, <laughs> I just want to reiterate, networking, single most important thing you can do to grow as a streamer, especially in the beginning, but also down the line when you're trying to grow, grow towards partner, you know, and then on beyond that. Make sure you are networking effectively within your communities, but also without your communities. You need to learn how to be a good streamer and work to make that happen. Because if you just sit there and whine about how you're not getting viewers and how your community's not supporting you, well, guess what? <laughs> you don't look very good and you're not gonna attract anyone. No one's gonna wanna watch you if all you do is whine and complain. And so if you're stuck struggling to get a few viewers and you can't figure out why, it might be this. You might just need to learn and grow on your own separate from the communities you belong to. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button and ring the bell so you get notified every time I upload new content. Make sure you join my Discord, The Spoon Drawer, where you can directly ask me questions about streaming, social media, or even just about me, if there's something you wanna know. And follow me on Twitter, because that's where I post the most frequent updates of what's going on, what games I'm gonna be playing, and I regularly run polls so that you guys can help choose the games that I'm playing during my streams. So thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.